Hey guys, so I paid off $60,000 worth of debt this year, and I kind of want to talk about how I got into debt, how I got out, what it feels like, what it felt like to be in debt. So I guess I'll start from the very beginning. Um, my first financial goal in my early 20s was to figure out how to make a high income. I thought if I have a high income, I could buy cool things. You know, I could make big car payments, I could pay for a big house, and I could buy whatever I wanted as long as I had this big income. So that was my first main focus. And that's right around the time I decided to start my business. I was reading A Millionaire Next Door that a lot of millionaires own small service-based businesses. And so, you know, it just clicked. It's like, okay, well then I need to start a business so that I can get a high income. And I considered a high income to be anything over six figures, anything over $100,000. I thought that was pretty good, you know? I was looking around in the world and I was like, okay, people who make, yeah, at the time, I didn't really know too many people who were making over $100,000 a year. Like, I knew older people, um, people that were more established in their careers. And I just thought, these are like the respectable people. They've worked their way up the corporate ladder. They have good jobs. They're on top of things in their life. So if I could get there, that would mean that I'm on top of things and that I'm moving in the right direction, that I'm kind of like climbing up the ladder of success in my own world. So I started with this idea of just to get to six figures. Um, but another thing was I didn't go to school. And so I was looking at all these people that did go to school and I noticed they all carved out four or six years worth of time where they were mostly solely focused on school. And they might work part-time or full-time and then go to school nights and weekends, but you know, for the most part, for a good chunk of time, that was their sole focus was getting through school. And so I thought, you know, I should carve out some time in my life, four, six years, however long it takes, for learning, for learning about business. And I'll read all the books, I'll talk to all the people that I can find, and I'll try to implement and practice everything that I'm learning. And who knows, maybe in four years or six years, I'll actually have all the skills I need to start the business. Because back when I first started, I didn't have anything. You know, I was starting with ground zero, nothing. So I was like, I could probably accumulate everything I need in that period of time. And then something else I noticed was all these people that were going to school, a lot of them were taking on student loans. And so every semester, they'd take on a couple thousand dollars in student loans. By the time they graduate, you know, it could be $60,000, $80,000, $100,000 worth of debt that they have to contend with at the end. And I'm like, well, those people are going into debt to learn. Maybe I shouldn't be super afraid of that. Um, I knew that it was dangerous, and I knew that it's not something to really play around with, and that it can really screw me over. But I thought, you know, if I could get my income up to a pretty good level, and I, if I bring on a little bit of debt, maybe that will be okay. Maybe I can take care of it later down the road. And so I don't recommend that you have that, my, that mentality and mindset, but that's where my mind was at. And I considered any debt or any financial penalties that I incurred over the years to just be tuition in the school of life. And so basically that's, uh, <laughs> that's where the trouble began. And, uh, you know, when you are first starting a business and you're relying on that income, it's interesting because on one hand, your business needs money to keep growing. You have to buy carpet cleaning machines and buffers and fans and ladders and pay payroll and your business needs uh, money coming in. But your life needs money. You have to pay rent. You have to pay your car payment. You have vacations that that you want to go on you you just have like life that you have to deal with you get your car towed or you get speeding tickets whatever you, like you personally are going to need some income so when you're first starting out and your income's kind of small because you don't know what you're doing and then your expenses are split into two pretty big categories it's a rough road and uh so that's kind of how i started getting into trouble i'd get like little speeding tickets i'd get parking tickets um, small little things, medical bills. Uh, my wife did go to school, so we had her student loans. Um, just little things started adding up, uh, credit cards, and just normal things, normal life things. And I was just kind of like, hey, I'll make the minimum payment, and I'm just not going to really, I'm not going to worry about finances right now. 
So, uh, eventually, one really big thing that had happened was I screwed up on my taxes. And maybe I'll get into that in another video. But basically, um, I knew that I had screwed up and I was really nervous about filing my taxes and like coming forward and doing the paperwork and sitting down with my CPA and letting him know that I had messed up. It was like a big source of like shame for me. It was, it was awful. It was awful because it's like every, every dollar that I'm making could potentially be making me deeper in debt and I don't know how big this hole is until I figure it out and it was like a dark depressing thing that I never really talked to anyone about and I carried that for a long time I'd be up late at night I would talk to my wife about it. I'd get super stressed and anxious and any little thing that happened would stress me out even more because it's like I have this big problem in the back of my mind and any little hiccup that I have in the forefront, like on a job or a problem with a customer, a problem with an employee, anything that was costing me money, it's like, great. That's just compounding this bigger problem that's bubbling up behind me. And so at the beginning of this year, January, I was like, I'm not gonna let another year go by. Well, not another year, but I'm not gonna let this year go by without getting on top of it. Like, I'm gonna figure this out, and I don't care if it takes me all year. I'm gonna do the right paperwork. I'm gonna save the money, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna come clean and be embarrassed. I'm gonna let my bookkeeper know, I'm gonna let my CPA know, and I'm just gonna say, you know, I messed up. I'm human, I'm just learning, I'm just figuring this thing out. No one's teaching me how to do this. I'm on my own here, uh, but I'm gonna stand up tall, and I'm gonna handle this no matter what and I don't care if it kills me, I'm gonna figure this out. And so that's how I started the year. And I decided that I was gonna work. Um, well, before that, you know, I started looking into like, so I got my income up. I told you guys that my first goal was to have a big income. Well, I got the big income and that felt good. It felt like where I needed to be. It felt like a good standard that I had for myself and that I met that standard. Um, so then the next step was going to be, how do you accumulate wealth? How do you make your money grow more money? How do you keep your money? And maybe one day if I am good at that and I'm diligent, maybe my money can take care of me and maybe I can like take care of other people with the money. Maybe it'll get to the point where my money's growing faster than I can even save. You know, if I'm saving 10% every month, maybe my money will grow faster than that if it's in the right investments over a period of time. And I just started thinking like, that's my next step is to build wealth. So I started looking into uh, people like Dave Ramsey, um, Graham Stevens, um, just some like money people online and on the radio. And one of the first things that people talk about is you need to get out of debt because if you have high interest debt payments, you're not gonna be able to invest enough to you know, make any progress. If your credit card interest rates are like 23% and you're only making 10% on your investments, it's kind of you know, a better idea to get that 23% return by paying off your debt. So once I kind of knew that that was the path that I was gonna go on and I developed a plan, I decided to do Dave Ramsey's baby step plan or his uh, debt snowball, where basically you line up all of your debts from smallest to biggest, and you, you pay off the smallest one, then the next one, then the next one. And the idea is that as you pay off one, one month, then you're gonna have that money that you can apply towards the next one. And then once that's paid off, then you're gonna have both of, um, you know, both of those paid off, so that amount that you were gonna pay on each of those can now go to the third one. And every single time you pay off a debt, your payments can get bigger and bigger and bigger until you tackle all of them. So, that's the plan that I decided to follow. And so, we wrote down all of our debts, uh, my wife and I, on an Excel spreadsheet. And we were looking at it and we're like, holy shit, this is so big. And it was like really scary, but you know, I figured out another thing too. I was reading Ben Franklin's autobiography and he says the secret to building wealth is industry and frugality. So as long as you're working a lot and contributing to society and you know earning a good enough income and if you can keep your expenses 
as low as possible, those two factors are gonna to come together and you're gonna have like a big margin at the end of the month to put towards your financial goals. So we decided that we were gonna work a lot and we've literally worked every single day this year. I took one day off. The day after Thanksgiving was literally, actually I took two days off. I went to the beach one day just to clear my mind. Um, but I've only taken two days off all week. No weekends, no holidays, uh, nothing. And it's because I've been trying to earn as much money as humanly possible. And I do have the ability to hire more employees and to get more help, but I wanted all that money to go towards debt so I could build a solid foundation so I can start building, you know, a huge nest egg. That way when I hire people, things are really rock solid and stable. So that's what we would do every single day, three in the morning, wake up, the alarm goes off and we head out and we clean all day long. And a lot of days it's more than 12 hours. Some of the days it's been more than 24 hours in a row that I have to work. Um, I did burn out a couple of times where it's like I could not handle any more work where my mind would just almost shut off like I couldn't even handle thinking any thoughts it would make me nauseous but I learned that I could go home I could sleep I could rest I could get water I can take care of myself and I could recover and I know it's not healthy to do that but there are some things that we do that are for the greater good that might not be healthy in the short term I could think about some books I read uh, about running ultra marathons these people are running like a hundred miles um, in a 24-hour period that's not healthy either but those are the goals that those people have they want to push themselves to the absolute limit and that's what I wanted to do this year I wanted to push myself to the absolute limit and I wasn't gonna do just a marathon where I push for you know a short amount of time this is gonna be an ultra endurance run all year long where I just don't stop and uh, I don't recommend that you do that but you know if you have big goals that might be need that might be what you need to do that's what I needed to do to get it done so that's what I did and every single month we were just throwing big big chunks of money at this debt and you know, I did some other things. I didn't solely focus on the debt. Uh, I bought a motorcycle. I bought a couple of like really cool things that we really wanted and needed. Um, so I wasn't like super frugal, but for the most part, m m that money was all going right towards debt. You know, Dave Ramsey says you need to do beans and rice and really scale back your lifestyle. And I, I think that for the average person, that's probably what you have to do, and it's probably really hard. For the average person, they're probably not gonna work every single day of the year like I did, and their income might not be as high as my wife and I, because she was working every single day too. She, she really worked really hard. So you have two people working all day, every day, and they're running their own business. Um, you know, your income could be a little bit higher than average, and so you don't have to make all those cutbacks. And so we were kind of lucky in that way. We got to do, most of the things that we wanted and then we still made a lot of progress towards our debt so um in april you know april before april 15th came around i sat down with the cpa and i talked to them about everything and we came up with a strategy and a plan and i filed the taxes and this big huge scary thing that was on my mind was nothing no one cared like, no one shamed me no one said anything about it no one said no one said anything um, it was like this big monster that I made up in my head for no reason and it was just like really holding me back and so I got on top of that and I found out that I actually owed the IRS about twenty thousand dollars so I put that right in my debt snowball and uh, how I did that was I got I had a credit card with a twenty thousand dollar limit and I just basically <laughs> went to the bank and I applied for this card and I told them what I was doing. And uh, as soon as I got the card, I put that entire bill on there. That way I didn't owe the IRS anything. And then over the next uh, little while, I just paid that credit card all the way down until it eventually got to zero. Um, but man, there were some times there where I just thought I wouldn't be able to do it. 
where something bad would happen and I'm like, hey, well, I'm not making the progress I need to make. I'm never gonna get out of debt. Um, my wife went to work one day really early in the morning and someone busted out the car window. And I was like, okay, hey, that's $400 that's f to fix this stupid window that we needed to pay off debt. That's, it just pissed me off. Um, one time we were driving to a job and the radiator just completely blew up in my um, Honda Accord. And so that was like $1,200. And when that happens, like, oh my God, I'm never gonna make progress. It's like, cause you're throwing money in this black hole and it feels like it's not, nothing's happening. You're making money and then you're sending it right out the door and you don't, your life isn't improving. It's just numbers on a screen going down. Um, which brings me to another point. Uh, I had this like weird emotional block with some of this debt that I had where it was like a shameful debt where something I had slipped up doing um, where I felt like I had dropped the ball and that contributed to the debt and I had like a weird emotional baggage attached to that. So with one thing was with that labor dispute with uh, the employee that I told you guys about. Um, I don't know if I told you guys about that or not in this video, but basically I had an employee file uh, a bogus labor dispute and in order to handle that it ended up costing me about ten thousand dollars and I didn't handle it the right way at the time I know better now but at the time I didn't handle it the right way so it ended up costing me a lot of money and so I'd go I'd make the, the payment on it it's two hundred dollars a month and I was just like every time I did that it was a reminder that I had messed up and I, it was ten thousand dollars I'm only paying two hundred dollars a month so it's like I'm not making any progress on this and it's just always there and it was just like such a burden but I went down there when I owed like six thousand left I went down to the state and I paid with my debit card and wiped out the entire thing I was so proud I was like sitting in the car talking to my wife about it I'm like right, can you believe that this is gonna be gone I'm gonna go in there and make a six thousand dollar payment on this can you believe it and I walk in and I pay it and the guy's like okay see you later thanks and it was like I bought a sandwich at the gas station or something like no emotion no nothing so I, I realized like this baggage that I'm holding because of this debt this shame that I have it doesn't mean anything to anyone else. This is a complete thing that I've made up in my mind. There is no emotion attached to money at all. Um, and so as I kept paying off more and more debts like that, I started to realize that I was a lot more disconnected from it. And it just became more numbers and not a personal reflection of who I am. So, but it was still on my mind because my next goal was to start accumulating money and start accumulating wealth and I knew that if I couldn't get out of debt I wouldn't be able to start doing that and so I always felt like I was in this hole even though I had disconnected emotionally but uh, basically a couple days ago I made my last payment it was about three thousand dollars maybe four thousand um, dollars on two different credit cards and I made the payment and went down to zero. Nothing happened. No one called me up to say congratulations. You know, I didn't stand up and do my debt-free scream. I haven't called Dave Ramsey. Um, but, oh my God, for the first time in my entire adult life, I haven't been in any kind of negative, bad debt. Uh, I still have a car payment and I know a lot of people especially Dave Ramsey followers don't think that you should have a car payment but my car is attached you know that debt's attached to an asset and I can sell that car if I need to and get out of that debt at any time and I make enough money that I could pay that off in like two months if I wanted to so I'm not I'm not very concerned about that so for the first time, aside from my car, I don't owe anybody anything. And I feel like I have my future back. I feel like I can do anything now. I feel like I can just, I feel like every dollar, oh man, I'm getting chills. I feel like every dollar that I earn 
above what I have to spend can now go towards savings and it can go towards my future and it can go towards helping other people and giving and creating more jobs and investing in my business to look to deliver a better service to all my customers and it's just an incredible feeling like I'm so glad that I did this this is the biggest project I have ever worked on in my entire life this is the hardest thing that I've ever had to do and I didn't I knew that I was gonna get here but man after being in a hole for so long it's like you can't even I couldn't even imagine it like I would dream about it and I'd kind of wonder like man I wonder what it's gonna be like to be out of debt I feel a couple of ways like one I feel really happy like I could do anything now that was another point that I wanted to make I guess listening to all those calls on the Dave Ramsey show really didn't do the entire process justice there's no way that I could have comprehended the change that I would go through personally by actually walking through this um, I couldn't have, have learned these life lessons and this fortitude and this strength to keep pushing forward even though I have little setbacks or even though it seems like an insurmountable goal you have so much personal growth and development that comes with that that you cannot get it from a radio show <laughs> even though I listened to that radio show for a decade going through the process was a totally different experience and that is where the real growth is because I feel like the same principles I use to get out of debt are the same principles that I'm gonna use to keep climbing higher and higher so the next thing is I don't want to get cocky and arrogant because I'm not in the best financial position in the world I'm not someone special I'm not you know I haven't done anything great I just run a small cleaning company and I happen to have dug myself out of debt I just happen to pay back the people I borrowed money from um, but it also worries me because I don't want to slide back into debt I don't want something bad to happen I want to get sued again I don't want another labor dispute <laughs> that I don't handle correctly um, so I'm kind of like nervous and cautious about moving forward because um, I know I feel like I could just slide right back into it if I lost control so there's like uh, some responsibility there that I I'm carrying now because I'm not I do not ever want to go back into debt again so anyway uh, if you want to do what you want when you want how you want for who you want how much you want subscribe to my channel and we'll see you guys next time